once this election is passed, that's going to change. Next, I wanted to also talk to you guys a little bit about this, because I know you guys keep bringing this up to me, this specific issue, the idea that, well, Dylan, Democrats may have performed well, but Republicans did take back the House. And Kevin McCarthy has said on multiple occasions that there will not be a blank check to Ukraine. Does that mean that now with the Republican controlled House, they're going to limit the amount of aid we're sending to Ukraine? Are they gonna stop the aid we're sending to Ukraine? Are Republicans gonna leave the Ukrainians high and dry in the face of Putin's guns? Well, I think this interview can give us some idea of exactly what not a blank check would mean. And I talked about this before the election, before the midterms, I said, there's no way that Kevin McCarthy is actually going to try to stop us from sending aid to Ukraine. I just refuse to believe it. I don't believe it. And I think I've been proven right by this interview. So let's let's read this. We're not going to write a blank check to Ukraine. Vows continued support. Representative Michael McCall, a Republican from Texas, told ABC this week on Sunday that the upcoming GOP-controlled House will continue to press for support for Ukraine, but will do so with more accountability, adding that Republicans are going to not write a blank check for Ukraine. Let's listen to the clip. And, and we know what Leader McCarthy has said about this. He's not going to write a blank check. And you have colleagues like Marjorie Taylor Greene of Georgia, Thomas Macy of Kentucky, who are unlikely to support more aid. So are you really certain that Republicans will bring this to the floor? Well, I think, as, as, as Mike said, I think the majorities on both sides of the aisle support this effort. I think, you know, everybody has a voice in Congress. You know, and the fact is, uh, we are going to provide more oversight, transparency, and accountability. We're not gonna write a blank check. You know, the last $40 billion package that passed, Martha, it was given to us you know, the day of the vote. And members only had a matter of hours to go through all these pages of a $40 billion Some of it's long-term aid, though. It's not just- It was long-term, and, and to be honest, a lot of this went to backfill our stockpiles. However, that's not, the Republicans are not gonna rule like that. We have a voice now and we're going to do this in an accountable way and with transparency to the american people these are american taxpayer dollars going in does that diminish our will to help the ukraine people fight no but we're going to do it in a responsible way and i think it's very important that the american people understand what's at stake here if we lose in ukraine chairman xi's going to look at taiwan and the ayatollah is already all in with russia and china in this fight and Kim Jong-un now is providing artillery shells to, uh, to uh, Russia to fight the Ukraine. Okay, so the end, he kind of just started going on in a diatribe. But for the first one minute and 20 seconds, this guy is basically making the case. Because we heard this, and a lot of people were like, hey, look, anti-Ukraine... The Ukrainian sentiment is building within the Republican Party. It seems to have even captured the minority leader, who's now going to become the majority leader, most likely, Kevin McCarthy, depending upon whether he can get the votes for it, or if Matt Gates will be able to console enough opposition to maybe get somebody else in. I doubt it, though. I doubt it. I don't think anybody else is going to get it. But people were, were concerned, and I said at the time that the majority of Democrats, the majority of independents, and the majority of Republicans support Ukraine. Not only the voters but especially the ones in elected office. The majority of Republicans in the House voted for aid. The majority of Democrats and all of, I'm pretty, pretty sure almost basically every independent, uh, the few that we do have in the House, voted for aid to Ukraine. And so I have no reason to believe that once this election is passed, that's going to change. Definitely when the Republicans only have a two to three to what, four House lead, they have four seats more than the Democrats. They're going to whip every single Republican against supporting Ukraine? That's ridiculous. Any Republican who ends up voting against support for Ukraine, they could potentially get hammered in the media. It's an unpopular position, and it's a position possibly that is also not that popular with their donors. Uh, there's very few people who can't even afford to take an anti-Ukraine stance. Marjorie Taylor Greene can because she has a devoted cult around her, and her whole uh, political image is, I'm a contrarian, I'm going to take whatever the opposite position is to the mainstream media because I like to play victim and I want to get attention. Like, that's that she, like she's a contrarian. She likes to be in front of people. She likes being in front of the cameras, and she is a hardcore isolationist. But the majority of Republicans, majority of Democrats 
are not isolationists. You're not going to tell me that in the matter of 20 years, we've taken the Republican Party from invading Iraq to saying, oh, no, never mind. No intervention whatsoever, even if it's morally correct. I, I refuse to believe it. It's ridiculous. And so when I saw these statements from Kevin McCarthy, we're not going to give a, a blank check to Ukraine. I said at the time, this will probably amount to nothing. This is most likely them just criticizing the, the party that's currently in office. And once this is all over, they're just going to say, oh, we're going to monitor the aid better. And you want to know what? I was right. It looks like from statements from Republican House members that what this ended up meaning wasn't, oh, we're going to send less aid to Ukraine. Or, oh, we're going to send no aid to Ukraine, which some people were scared that was going to happen. What it really meant is that they were just going to keep a better eye on the aid. That, that the Republicans are better financial managers, and they're going to track every dime, you know, the stick of the Republican Party. They're the fi fiscally responsible conservative. Ukraine doesn't have much to fear when it comes to elected Democrats or Republicans when it comes to pulling aid from you. I know a lot of people going into this midterm were scared that this could possibly affect the flow of, of aid to Ukraine. Definitely when you see Marjorie Taylor Greene on the news every other week talking about how we need to not send aid to Ukraine, or Tucker Carlson when she's not busy. But at the end of the day, the majority of Americans support aid to Ukraine, the majority of Democrats do, the majority of Republicans do, and the majority of Independents do, and that is the same for, uh, for elected office as well. And what it ended up being is mostly just posturing from Kevin McCarthy. That's what it ended up being. Not that surprising, and I can tell you right now that I don't feel that nervous about the amount of aid we're sending to Ukraine in the near future. I think we'll continue to send them a lot of aid for the near future. That maybe will change a year from now or when the when the dynamics of the conflict changes. But the Kevin McCarthy quote was not one to fear. It looks like it was just a big nothing burger and Republicans are still going to send weapons to Ukraine. Good. It's good news, but it's also not terribly surprising news.